Welcome to another session of Endless Legend. And I think this time we're going to play the Alai, um, a new faction, or relative, <laughs> as you see at this point, kind of old faction out of the Shifters expansion pack. And since I was playing the Alai and they have an affinity of Guardians, I figured I might as well pick up the rest of the DLC. So we're going to be having wonders in this game, etc. Now, what makes the Alai sort of special is that their units change during the summer and the winter. So they typically have a more aggressive um, stance during the winter, like the Monk and the Seeker. Uh, the Seeker has a charge which applies a debuff, or a buff, respectively, I think. Yeah, I think it does. And no, it applies a debuff to the enemy. So the Seeker can charge and reduce attack during the summer, which is like a positive buff. So it's good at keeping you alive. Or it can move uh, and apply a defense debuff during winter, which makes it a lot easier to kill their target instead of preventing its damage. That's sort of the theme here. Um, similarly, the support unit, the Skyfin, um, applies morale bonuses to your units during summer, but reduces enemy morale during winter. The monk, your uh, or high-end aggressive unit, is more dangerous during winter, but also more durable during the summer. So that's the basic idea here. Um, this leads to some weird moments, like. One thing is that during winter, like, your um, upkeep costs are way higher because your summer upkeep costs are reduced. So I often end up randomly, like, well, not so randomly, but I end up broke during winter um, for that reason. So that's the one thing that's really interesting about this. Like, the new trait um, during the Dust Eclipse gives the ally extra movement and then bonus action point, which is great because you can A, attack twice, and also the bonus movement always is great. And together with having the Skyfin, which is a really powerful uh, scouting unit, the Alai are really good at doing map objectives. Like, um, they're fast starting units. Cavalry, that's six movement speed. Our settlers are even kind of fast. Um, the Skyfin, this unit we can kind of pick up early. It costs some pearls, which is unusual for a unit. But basically, it has a lot of movement and it can fly. Um, even monks are quite fast. So that means we're really good at picking up pearls during winter, which is important because we need pearls for a lot of our stuff. We're really good at picking up temples during the dust eclipse. And that's really kind of, I kind of like about the LA. They have units that can quickly scout and collect resources, um, including this, especially the Skyfin, which isn't really a combat unit, though obviously it helps. As you can see, it's solitary. That means it can't be added to armies, meaning that it has to re be reinforced, reinforce armies directly. Um, and it's it's good at pick, it's extra good at picking up pearls, and it has this one of Origa uh, ability, which is kind of interesting because it can sit on an extractor location and collect resources for you that way, which is really cool. So the Skyfin, in a way, in addition to being a great scout and um, being great at picking up extra objectives like pearls, temples, etc. Uh, it's also great at generating strategics and luxuries for you, kind of like a mobile extractor, which can also level up and improve its uh, extractor ability. So we can kind of get away with not getting extractor tech, which is something I really like to do because extractor tech always distracts from other tech. Um, we have some unique technologies, we'll get into those during the game. Um, now, the, the one thing that's really distinctive about um, the Alai in terms of uh, economy is this we chose a few perk. It means that we have more expansion disapproval, um, and we have. I don't. There's only ship recovery things on that big of deal. Um, but we have more growth required for per food on population. So that means we're getting less population per food, A, and B, we're getting a lot more expansion disapproval. And this basically, uh, <laughs> well, encourages us to stay on a fewer cities until we can really build up our luxury uh, resources and really, like, compensate for that. Um, this basically means that we're going to have to play as a bit of a, a taller faction. 
It also probably means the other yield I create because this is a very hefty negative. Um, the, the sort of upside to compensate for this is this Garth of the Alae. Instead of normal burrows, we use pills to build these Garths, and as you can see, they're just better than burrows. Um, they have, they give you more resources, like a two extra <coughs> influence on level one is really good as well. They cost less happiness, and they give you more happy. They give you more resources when you level them up. So Garths are really good, but they do cost pills. And you get one every for every population, instead of for every two populations, to compensate for the fact you get populations so slowly. So, we sort of, I think, at least at the start of the game, want to play as a sort of tall faction. Have a bit, have maybe one or two, or a lot, a lot fewer regions, and really exploit or build up these cities with these Goths. Now, there's some other bonuses that I d don't pay enough attention to, like um, you get extra. If, if, uh, what is the word? Initiative per morale units, that's pretty impressive. An extra initiative is really important for fights so that we get the first mover, especially if we can clump our units together. I need to remember to use this. I do this anyway, yeah. And we can, um, uh, we can do treaties easier in summer and declarations of war, like declarations like war during winter. So, kind of. This adds to the theme of winter being the time where we can be active, and summer being the time where we're a bit more passive, more defensive. Uh, this is kind of probably important to keep in mind. I'll probably forget about this. <laughs> but basically, the Call of the Auriga upgrade in the latest expansion really uh, added to the Alayi theme of picking up all the map objectives, using these uh, sky fins to control lots of areas, and then Compensating for the fact that you don't have as much of an economy by turning lots of pearls into these nice gaffs. Cool. So let's start a game watching the cinematic for the LAE. Uh, I was playing a bunch of practice games and I forgot to actually put it on Pangea by accident. I was like, why am I supporting these to enemies so often? <laughs> um, that being said, the AI being aggressive one of the big worries we have here and the other worry I have is that our economy is just going to be weak and to the point that we won't be able to uh, really compete with other factions well it's possible I should just focus on building up with fewer cities than I have before that will really solve some of the economic issues the Goths are really good but the problem is just losing extra workers is kind of bad like it's, it's just really like a big deal because food is quite important and then just having less value per food point generated is uh, a pretty big drawback in addition to being limited in expansions that's probably a little bit worse oh, sorry no, a little bit less bad What list of the cinematic? You beings fixed, inflexible, and slow are not true Oregon and do not see that she, our mother, as her life ebbs low shall be delivered by the Alayi. For we who change, adapt, and persevere will fight for her survival come what may. So heed these dire warnings most sincere, for ruin comes to those who bar our way. So cool, that sounded a lot more threatening than I'll probably be in this game. Uh, <laughs> if I ever have to summon every bars my way. Oh, Dragon Bears, obviously. If somebody ever bars my way, I may have to uh, roll over and die because <laughs> fights on Endless can be like, or wars on Endless can be really decisive. So, I've had this pack and I don't know really what this does. <laughs> okay, so. 
Let's let's kind of see what happens with this. I'm not sure how you get these guardians. But yeah. It should be fun if we do. But I uh, picked up Lost Tales. Uh, for extra quests, for more diversity. Uh, and more tracks of the game, obviously. It's always nice. Now, a good thing about the ally units is that they're good scouts. I'm just going to turn on the tiles for the starting region. We need to decide where to settle. Um, this is a good anomaly. This is a good anomaly. The river is good for food, which is still important for us, even though we, we need more food to get benefits. Like, we still need to build up our goths. Um, okay, our, our district substitutes. And the only way we're doing that is with food, obviously. So I'm going to send my hero in this direction. Uh, we'll discuss the hero perks later. Basically, our hero is also kind of fast, even though it has only five points. Okay, not getting anything there. It's kind of annoying, but whatever. Oh, this is a new track. I think I'm going to send the seeker in this direction. As you can see, the the bonus movement, the six movement instead of four, is really important, including f like for just cutting through this forest terrain. This um, this taking us only th just taking us three movement points to get to here means that we can actually reasonably move through forest terrain without it being like I mean. We're big, our movement is being reduced by the same amount, but we're still making headway. A lot of other factions, like your units, will just get stuck in the forest. It'll be awful. Now, I've moved here. I think I'm just going to bounce back here to get a better idea of what this region is like. I haven't actually explored this, but I know where it is. Somehow. Okay. The, the downside of popping right here on this um, this location over here is that we will have a weirder time triangulating, although there are two um, anomalies here. Anomalies give you more points, so that's worth thinking about, we want those anomalies. So here, this location is also appealing because of the river. Um, or this location rather. I think that's giving us a decent amount of value. But we can choose the... Although that reduces our science output early in the game. And this increases our... Everything but our dust output. But fortunately we're pretty good about dust. Our units have less upkeep during the summer. Meaning that dust is not too much of an issue. And this also has 15 industry. Uh, this location also has 15 industry actually. But this has also got 11 food compared to like 16 food. The only uh, reason I could. Let's come. Let me just count the tiles. <laughs> so that's 15 and 11 versus 16 and 8. So this is actually giving us more resources overall. The only reason I could see to settling here is because I desperately want the river bonuses. And those include here. Um, oh, these are these are new. So these are. If we do this, oh, so it's kind of like um, completing these deeds for um, endless space too. Like you, the first person to do something gets a reward. Um, so here's one upgrade. Oh, this is new. Husband new centers. That's pretty cool. Probably less good in the LAE because we get less benefits to. We get less workers, so we're gonna get less benefits for worker things that require workers. So this is uh, Acropovistics. It means that we get can get bonus dust on river tiles during summer. And then there's also other upgrades that benefit from water, like agricultural sciences. We can use we can get bonus uh, food on terrain of river. Um, we can get fluid biomechanics. We get bonus other stuff on terrain of river. Uh, but a science, <laughs> other stuff, <laughs> science basically, yeah. Um, so there is some draw to go for the river, but I think we can always bounce back there and collect that later. I mean, look, we can go, we can build out like this, and even we can even just 
just place a satellite district over here in addition to our triangle. Something I'm doing more and more is just adding random districts to my cities to collect stuff I need. Now they can always triangulate up, up like this, in like a big triangle. Like in the long run. Um, I don't think I'll miss this amount of dust uh, that much. At least not during the summer when I have a high reduced upkeep on my units. I'd rather just pick up Empirement, and then during the winter when I need the dust, this won't be available, so this is not the best upgrade. Uh, it, there's an interesting... There's, it seems like the the DLC added a bunch of extra upgrades for different... Um, for a bunch of extra buildings on various upgrades, which is really cool, actually. It just make, maybe makes certain upgrades a bit better than they used to be. So we're gonna have to commit first. Let's move over here. It doesn't look like there's any other bonuses that I should pick up. So we just move up here. And I think place it over here. So we've actually kind of started on the hill, which is sort of funny. I wonder what, how um, the upgrading the city center is as opposed to upgrading a golf. Okay, Museum of Orga, this is a wonder. It's basically like the um how, what is cost reduction on Empire approval? Oh. Yeah, oh it means cost reduction on them if the Empire approval is happy. Okay. So uh this wonder it seems like it's it's very similar to the research lab uh sorry. The Endless Research Park in Endless Space 2. Might be worth picking up eventually, but in the meantime we have to get this Founders Memorial, and we can get it in four turns, which is really good. Um, the LIE cities look pretty cool. You'll see more of that when we get the Goths. Now, we could cheat out the Founders Memorial. Well, actually, we can't really get extra. We're going to have to build up our um, our food first. The last remaining thing about the LAE, which is special, is that we can always know how long the winter is going to last. So here, we know that the winter is coming in 17 turns. Some some upgrades, their value depends heavily on the winter. So if you get them early, and then the winter happens, their value is drastically reduced. Like Acropovistics, this dust dredger, um, gives us uh, dust per rivers but only on summer so if we get this early and then the winter happens early it's not worth it similarly c cultivation uh the seed storage upgrade is only good well it's it does something during winter but it's only really good during summer it's something i really want to pick up but given that the winter is happening so quickly i can delay this if i if i normally this is a bit risky as a technology but the nice thing about the alley is you always know how long the winters or the, the winter's gonna last how long it is until the winter hits. So here we know we have 17 turns. We're not going to get as much value out of this. We have to prioritize other researchers first, like mill foundry, like public private, like uh, like language square, and maybe sewer system, I'm not sure. So if we're getting, say, these two technologies first, that's already eight turns, then there's like nine turns left, then we have to get this, then there's maybe like, we get five turns of value out of this before the winter hits, and then we're basically uh, in trouble. We can also get this husbandry center. Um, so this is this is appealing, I really want this at some point during the game. I just don't want it right now because I know how long the, the summer is going to last. Um, this is also the center from really on. Actually, it looks like there's a bunch of new upgrades, so I'm going to have to reevaluate all these different... Uh, technologies. Now, Language Square is good, don't get me wrong, but I need this mill foundry as well, just to generate enough uh, industry in my starting city. Well, improve my industry, and it's the, the logical next upgrade here. We can party with minor factions, but again, that doesn't have to happen immediately. We can delay that a little bit. We're also losing a little bit of dust here. Um, I guess it's just gonna happen. The Founders Memorial will help with that. Our start doesn't have that much extra dust. 
Okay, so here's the start of our quest. The Alaii have returned to Oruga after... So, uh, the backstory of Oruga is that this was an endless research lab where they did a lot of experiments, etc. And the Endless being the most powerful race in this universe, or joint universe, which sort of their civilization sort of died out. And um, the Alaii have retreated in response to that, and only recently have they um, sort of returned to this continent or whatever. And we can search a ruin, and if we do that, we get the Skyfin, which I think will show off how cool this unit is. So we search here. And uh, now we need to build an altar of Auriga. Uh, get some Quicksilver, which is okay. It's not bad, but I'm some people wine maybe or something. Anyway, so that's going to cost us more upkeep, which is kind of what's hurting us with the start. We desperately need some more uh, dust. I almost want to go into Empire Mint immediately to make sure our dust isn't in trouble. Um, this requires to destroy armies. Okay, I don't think that's going to happen for us at least. And this requires us to uh, gather 30 units of one luxury resource. And it gives us a ton of dye. And dye is not bad actually. And this requires us to build this thing, in which case we get this thing. So, yeah, that would be nice. This thing is pretty decent. Um. Yeah. Wait, well, what does that take? What does this mean? What is uh, an expansion? Do we literally get an expansion? Not sure. I'm not actually sure what this means. But anyway, it would be nice to pick up the museum. I do like these new songs. It's well, new songs. New songs for me. I didn't purchase this expansion, so. Earlier. Um, as you can see, the Skyfin unit is a great scout. It has uh, flying and a good amount of movement, meaning that it could easily traverse terrain and pick up all of these um, temples. So, as you noticed, as you might have noticed, we pick up uh, pearls, which is the special resource you can use to build AR Goths from. Uh, investigating temples. So we're really incentivized to get as many temples as we can in addition to paying close attention to um, uh, the landscape during winter when we can collect the pearls naturally. I've been playing with pearls but I haven't really talked about them as much. I mean I have used them for stockpile tricks etc. Although if the LIE will have a lot less pearls lying around because they have a general use for us which is to build our improved um, burrow suites or goths or whatever. And we're just going to make sure we scout in all directions. Now we can use our extra dust to immediately buy out the Founders Memorial. But the question is then, what are we using this dust on? And else is not much. I can move out of food production to get this mill foundry a turn sooner. Um, or to deal with my economic crisis. And I think picking up the mill foundry a bit sooner <coughs> is a bit better because then I can use this dust to get the founders more or faster and everything just happens a bit sooner, I think. Um, I think because of the dust situation, I'm fine delaying language square a little bit. I'm not ecstatic about it, but I am okay with it. Now, our quest requires us to build the altar of Origa. This is this building over here. It lets us unlock these bonuses. We can only have one of one out of Origa on our main on our entire civilization. But one cool thing about the Alter of Origa it doesn't count as a burrow. So building one actually doesn't make your other burrows more expensive. So think of it as a, a cheap burrow. It's basically like building your first burrow twice in terms of industry. So that, that's a good. Um often get the altar in a, in a city which is struggling with more industry but still wants the burrows. Although this, at this point we'll just get the altar as fast as we can. And I think we have to level it up for a future quest. So we want to put it to maybe here or here and then triangulate around it like so maybe. Um, the Goths are, as I mentioned, pretty good. Yeah, we're losing not that much food production by focusing on the science. It's possible I should be doing that sooner. Yeah. 
let's jump up here, complete this quest, we get Breaker, which is a decent shield. Um, I mean, it gets our class later on, but whatever. And that's pretty decent, because our hero has the option of using a shield and a crossbow. If we want. Wait, this is a reskin of Proof Vision, and... Okay, these are these are different skins for these items. That's kind of cool. They look kind of boring in the start of the game. Let's just bounce around. Probably don't want to cross the lava. Actually, we do it. Wait, this is a lot. It's not that much damage, actually. I talk myself into it. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I unfortunately had to set my hero on fire. Um, yeah. He is the only survivor. And he's, yeah, he's probably the only survivor of that lava run as well. Now I'm going to continue to send my army in this direction. And picking up extra temples is really great for us. The extra pearls of the stage of the game really do matter. Getting the altar of Origo faster will help us have something to do with our production. A, and we'll get our quest. It's fine. I'm just going to pop this Founders Memorial with extra dust. We collect so much dust from temples. It's actually, it's quite possible for us to um, be able to spend it aggressively. And we, we will have an easier time collecting stuff during the dust eclipse. So, okay, we get industry, we get influence if we produce industry, which shouldn't be too bad. So we would, we're fine spending dust quite aggressively in the early game. Other factions, sometimes you, you're quite dust starved and you want to save it for heroes. I don't think this is that faction, but uh, the more foundry still needs the science production to be research. Um, the more I play, I'm more in favor of just keeping a work on science. Often you need, especially have we have a good industry start like this. Um, I do want this empire made a bit sooner rather than later, but I also want this worker sooner. If I can pick up this worker now, it's kind of cool. Like we could we could divert into science without actually jeopardizing our fastest worker production. As, as I was saying, the the worker production is really slow on this faction. Like. We need to uh, we need to get some way more growth here. It's uh, it's indicated here. We need way more growth to pick up extra workers. It doesn't actually show we're not producing less food or anything. We're just getting less value for the food produced. I think we'll just pull this worker and then put it into empowerment, and then pick up empowerment sooner. Just to make sure that we um, we can maintain all of these armies in the field because having more armies is better because it helps us scout more. Okay. Okay, I finally have enough for the altar. Now can we place the altar in such a position that we get extra dust? I don't know. I mean this spawn is a lot going for it otherwise. It's just not that good for dust. Okay, we can go up here and just pick up this glass deal. Although I'm not in love with that. I almost want to go for the river. This river tile being of course a little bit better than other tiles. Um, I don't have to build the altar right away though. In fact, it's probably best to wait a bit until I have enough uh, industry to get that a bit faster. Or maybe I want to get the Empire a bit sooner. Okay, let me just scout in this direction. Okay, this lava river, I'm just going to bounce back. I'm just wondering if there's something of interest over here. Now I'm going to maneuver around with this hero. Uh, we've got nothing there. Typical. And we've got extra gold. And we've got a hero level. So I'm just going to pop this gold, and that will help us stay financially afloat for the next 10 turns, which is good. That means we can probably get this language square first, and then go back for the Empire Mint. I think I will do that. Now, the hero has some cool perks. Uh, so the ally E tree. Is, is pretty weird, but I kind of like it, the more I think about it. So this Pathfinder's perk is pretty awesome. It basically means that we can ignore army, we can ignore movement penalties on our, from terrain on our army. 
So if we have a region like this full of forests, normally that means that only takes forever to get through it. But with that skill, we'll ignore that completely, which is great. Um, we also have, okay, this reducing bri increased reduced bribe cost on armies is, it's all right. Sometimes you do have to bribe. It, it feels bad sometimes, but sometimes you just should bribe to get a town to join your side or something. And if the quest, for instance, for this town is too difficult to do, we still want this town because it's in our region. It gives us an extra worker, which is crucial. It's in our starting region, so it's really important. So the town is really uh, crucial, I think. So I can actually see this bribe skill doing something valuable for us. Um, building co pro production on city, this is nice. Although, similarly, it's nice to be able to pick up extra pills. This hero is not as good as a governor, as I think. I think as a scout in general, an army commander. So having to tie it down to a city, maybe we just want to get all our pill buildings at once, once we have this skill. Um, but at the same time, picking up extra pills of our hero will help us out in that direction as well. This is powerful though, right? It's just that the hero is well suited to being a scout or a military commander. This, left, this lets us do extra damage against targets which are already weak pretty cool and the ability to retreat uh, much easier is also surprisingly powerful actually um, I sort of want this for the end games I can just bounce around other territories or the middle to end game and just not care about um, their armies just be able to retreat from any army although it take it does take a while to pick this up right these upgrades are, are, are like help our hero be a better scout. These upgrades will help our hero be a better military commander. The range 2 tree is pretty good for that. And But I almost feel like I want to make sure I can pick this up in case I have to bribe this town to save some dust on that. It's a bit of a corner case, but this improved Oregon affinity is also really important. That being said, this upgrade is also great, Agile Mover. So maybe it's just correct to go for this at the moment because we're not getting that much value out of Pathfinder, although Pathfinder is close enough to Agile Mover. But I think I want to go this direction just to get this pull upgrade, get this bribe upgrade in case I need either. Um, I'm really just, I'm kind of experimenting with this hero. Uh, obviously you can you can decide different, you can just pick the ranged perks, but I really want to make use of the Anai perks. They're reasonably unique, you know, interesting. The ranged upgrades are like, um, they're kind of boring. <laughs> I've used them before, they're powerful, you know. We all know that. Um, okay, I'm just gonna pick up this, let's put this work on science because language square is important. It looks like we're not getting this uh, worker on our own. Um, I, happiness improves food, that's why the worker doesn't actually matter on this location anymore. But I do need this language square as soon as possible. Now science is pretty good, so I think I can go for the Empire Mint before I go for the Public Library. They're both important though. Uh, the set, this topography is, it was called something else before I think. Uh, the Geomics Labs was never as impressive as Public Library, but now it's looking a lot better because of this extra random upgrade that's been tacked onto it. Um, but I do think I need the Empire Mint because of my financial situation being like a bit dodgy. <laughs> and here's another player. Ideally, we'd like to know who they are, but um, meeting. Oh, this is the dragon. Never mind. I've already met them. So the dragon have good armies in the early game. Less great armies in the middle of the late game. Though, so that's that's a decent silver lining. Just going to continue scouting here. One other thing I neglected to mention is that. We have this shipyards um, unlocked, so we can do sea travel. Obviously, it's it's really slow. We have like free movement on the waters. We're not the mobile, but um, yeah, it's an option for us. I'm not sure should I scout up here or scout down here with this army. I almost think scout down because this army can take care of whatever is down there. Now, I do want to make sure I can talk to nearby minor factions. I don't want to get as many temples. Oh, spices. Spices are nice. Spice of life. Um, we're just definitely going to pop the spices. This is what's great about um, collecting lots of regions, is that you get lots of 
well, having all these mobile armies means that we can collect lots of temples, which means we can get also sort of hidden economic bonuses. Now I do I do want my hero to actually talk to a bunch of minor factions once this pops. And I think most importantly we need to talk to this faction on our region. Because that will definitely be of value to us, converting that village. The other villages, you know, they might be of value. This region looks great by the way, I should talk to this. But I'll probably have my hero on talking duty. Is that a, well, it's a job now, okay, it's a job now. We don't have to worry about not introducing ourselves to Red, because um, they know about us. If we're bothering them by being too close to them in terms of borders, they'll be mad at us no matter what. So, um, yeah, we don't have to worry about uh, antagonizing them by meeting them. It's one of those weird mechanics of the game. We can already pick up uh, the Mill Foundry using dust. I neglected to notice this. And I think I probably want to because I can pick up an altar or a golf relatively quickly. Uh, I think I'm gonna go. This gives us a bit more resources, but this will pull us in the direction of the river a bit sooner. I guess this matters a bit. I'm wondering is this tile better than this tile? Um, the answer is not if we want science. This tile gives us more resources. But then again, this tile gives us more resources. So it's a question of industry and food over science. Although we can always pick this up actually. So that's also a decent satellite region for now. I'm just going to go like this with the altar. Because we have less of a food penalty, we can build much more burrows without being punished, really. So we can be a bit more ambitious with our city design. Oh, I forgot to pick this up, apparently. Doesn't matter. Or maybe there's another quest on top of that. Alright. Got some extra pearls. That is great. No new strategics or whatever. Um, just going to bounce up here. And we might as well talk to this region um, now. Now we can jump onto the sea with this scout. If we feel like we've done all the exploring we can do on land. I'm just going to pick this up. It's nice that you can just run around their territory, this unit. Um, they shouldn't, well, it's in their interest not to attack it because of how just good this unit is for them, because sometimes it parks over their um, resource extractor. And in that case, it's, it's actually very valuable for the other side. As you can see, this Pathfinder's perk is doing wonders for us here, like, it would have taken us forever to reach that if we weren't equipped with that skill. Lust for loot. Lust for loot is very good. Um, let me equip that quest. What Lust for loot basically does is that you get a bunch of different um, ruins objectives on your heroes, like you have to run and get them, and each ruin... Okay, we have an army here, we need to run around that, I think. And each rune will give you something extra. So, or in addition, if it's already, even if it's not being searched. So, you can often get a bunch of strategic or luxury resources. Sometimes strategics. Luxuries are obviously more impressive at this point in the game. Um, I do probably want to run out the Seeker. Just try and run circles around that army. Next turn. Or at least the start of next turn. And next time we'll be picking up Language Square, and then after that, I think Empire Mint. I just want to have an economy after, um, you know, gold crashes. Um, well, this like, sounded way too real world and boring. <laughs> Emeralds are, are kind of garbage. A bonus fortification on a city is not very useful, unless you're being attacked, at which point you're probably in trouble anyways. Um, we can pop it later to make sure we stay above 60% uh, approval to, to stay in the happy zone if we want to. And I probably will do that. The question is with this army, do we want to jump onto the sea immediately? I think we might. Maybe we want to talk to this village first, but we don't really... The thing is, the thing I've realized, talking to villagers is not intrinsically valuable. You want to talk to villagers where you can think about settling or which are on your regions already 
Um, so I think it's maybe a bit more valuable if we turn this into a boat and start looking into other regions. Normally it's, it's actually best to send your hero on uh, the sort of boating adventures because um, the hero is least likely... Oh, they're attacking my Skyfin? That's horrible of them. Skyfins are cool. Are they settling this region? In which case they don't want to pick up this quest. The Skyfins are solitary, by the way. I, I previously thought I could just equip my hero to them, but no, you can't do that because they're solitary armies. Um, now, have we found everything in this location? If we did, might be a good location to become a boat. Yeah, become a boat and pick up some sunken ruins. I'm only really doing this because of um, the fact that we've already explored these regions on land quite a bit. We're not getting that much extra value out of our early units by just keeping them on land, and I prefer to be able to scout on as many regions as possible. All right, let's let's party with our hero. Gift eight die. Do we have die? Um, no. We can just spend dust to pacify them immediately. That will basically give us an extra work on the city. Uh, speaking of which, I should probably micromanage this a bit more. We don't need the empire mid right away. We can even get a goth before we get the Empire Mint. As long as we have Empire Mint available before uh, this gold runs out, which is in seven turns, which we will. So this quest is um, is reasonably difficult. Picking up the required um, uh, luxuries is often not easy. So I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna think about bribing them actually, and it's gonna take us a while so we can get this bribe reduction. So we have extra dust lying around, so I think I should just bribe. I mean, bribing feels it feels yuck in some ways because you're losing value. We could be doing the quest otherwise, etc. But um, really, it's you just gotta you just gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. <laughs> right, we can talk to this village, but I don't want to talk to this village as well. It's close to our borders. It seems like a reasonable region to settle. This would have been a reasonable choice as well. Like, ideally you want more than two village, two or more villages. Okay, colonize this region, that's easy. And I'm going to sign the hero here, get the experience from this talk. Okay, this is either really easy or really difficult. Like, we can't kick the dragon out of this region, so looks like we probably will fail this quest. But I do want to complete last for loot. As long as I can just keep my army safe. So these quests tend to be really trivial or impossible to do. <laughs> Often they're trivial, but you know, in this case, it looks more like the impossible side is happening, is like kicking in. Uh, and now we've got this extra worker, which is great, obviously. Now we do want to make sure we produce enough food. Ideally, we want to pop out the settler just as we complete this. If we go for the settler, we don't have to go for the settler. But picking up this region is something I want to do. Look, look at all these anomalies. Now, going up to two regions means our, our expansion disapproval is going to increase dramatically. Um, so, let's avoid that. I could make this industry go faster, but in that case, I'm picking up the settler sooner, meaning I'm not getting food production anymore. So, actually, you want them to align. The, the start of the settler production should align with the food production in general. I'm gonna go for the. I think I'm just gonna stay here, pick up this empire mint a bit sooner. Now, how long is this gold gonna last? It's seven turns. So, we're actually gonna start. Maybe we should start the empire mint before the settler. Though, I do want the settler at some point. And actually, this, this location will improve our dust quite a bit, I think. Yeah, terrain of, uh, this terrain is actually kind of garbage, making up for the fact that these terrains are so good. So yeah, maybe we want to settle a bit higher, use up that terrain a bit more. And go maybe for a triangle like this. I'm not sure, this region's a bit weird. Alright, I'll, I'll decide what to do in four turns, basically. I might, might have to get, pop out the Empire Mint a bit sooner. 
Unless I do want to connect this. Alright, this is a Dragon Link. Okay, they have connected this region. Meaning that um, that quest is unfortunate because it will help them out. I miss the fact that they had a settler there. Okay, this quest for augmented extractors is... Um, although we got some experience from picking up the quest, so... They'll, they'll probably lose that quest because there's... Um, there are enemy regions, or enemy armies. Um, wait. This uh, ability to make extractors augmented is very nice. Um, having extra luxuries per extractor is pretty, pretty sweet. We could pick up die eventually, or even, you know, we could pick up double die and do it that way. Although we're not, we're not married to that, obviously. I'm just gonna make sure I scout. Oh, for Morians. Cool, these are the... Okay, talking of other fortresses, we'll get us this fortress. Which is neat, though not, not necessary. I think I'm just gonna go back and pick up this. And again, the, the reason I did this weird pattern is because um, once you dive, you lose your movement. Oh, we have to... No, that's a pretty rubbish quest. It's all the way over there. Once you dive, you lose all the movement points. So You could talk to this, this minor faction. But then we're talking to minor factions uh, pretty far away from our main region, so we're not really getting value out of converting them or pacifying them. I could just pop this back. I mean, I don't want to move this army too far away. It's really slow on the water. This army, on the other hand, is really fast on the water. And it turns out that was a good decision because there's randomly another one there. Or randomly another uh, Psychid Rune. I want to make sure I pick this rune up for Last Flute as soon as I can. I do want to do this quest. Um, I'm fine putting myself in danger a bit to uh, get loot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put yourself in danger for loot. I mean, like, uh, sign me up, but yeah. I mean, it's possible I'm overvaluing food a little bit. I pick up Empire Mid really quickly and just buy this out. And I think that's that's a good choice. Um, basically, we're making use of dust that we otherwise wouldn't be making use of. Or at least not at this stage of the game. Dust is not the best resource. Because of that. Like, um, that's not the best resource. Normally it's just sitting around here doing nothing. So if we can buy out stuff of it, we're basically using our dust in productive ways. Let's just make sure we dive here. No, we didn't find anything. Watch sure what we do with these armies. I might just send the, the Skyfin out on the adventure. Because it, it's, it's much more sturdy in the sense that minor factions won't actually attack it. This is part of what this one of Oregon focus. There's so many random stuff to discuss with the LAE that's my excuse for forgetting all these mechanics. They're really a <laughs> fun faction of there. Um, okay, we get we got the Quicksilver. And now we need to reach further approval across Empire. This is one of the reasons you don't want to actually expand too fast, because this is obviously difficult if you have these massive expansion disapproval uh, modifiers. Um, bonus XP on our units is worth it, so I think we're just going to pop that. I wonder if this will actually put us at the fervent. Yes, it actually does. Wow. Um, the one time, the one time everyone did something useful. This is a good mine of action in terms of having powerful units. It's less good. The bonus is okay. I'm going to pick up Empire Mint now. Now, our science production is actually not the worst, but I do want to get public library at some point. Um, topography is good if we have terrain of science, but we don't really. So we have like three, so six bonus. We'd rather have this at that point. We can also go directly for the sewer systems, which is a good choice. Um, as I said, now we're finally in the position where we can think about picking up cultivation, but we know the winter is coming soon, so that would be a bad choice, at least right now. I do like this upgrade, though, especially with this husband who's there to add. And I really do like, think this upgrade is quite good, but especially since we don't have to worry about extractors because we can just build more sky fins. But anyway, 
public library it is. Um, and once we're done with that, we can actually, once we have the Empire Mint out, we can actually just think about popping a settler, and I think we should. Because this region is so cool. Like, look at these anomalies. We're getting a new mine faction, the Silix. And the Silix are not bad. There's even wine here. Actually, that almost wants, makes me want to pick this up. In addition to the fact that we got this augmented extractors uh, quest, which is really uh, a huge, uh, this is really a huge buff um, to this uh, open pit mine. Normally, it's like okay, it's okay, you know, it's not bad. But um, you wonder if there were better things for you to be doing. But once you start getting two resources a turn, uh, it really starts being a lot more appealing. I think I'm just going to bounce the Seeker back. I'm not actually sure. I'm definitely going to keep exploring the seas with the Skyfin. It's really fast, so we don't have to worry about it randomly getting lost or being outside of our regions too much. Um, but I do want to keep the, the ground armies here. Uh, part of that is that I can link up these two armies to make sure we're losing less experience or less dust per turn. Part of that is that moving ground armies too much might mean that we're not getting all the temples during a possible dust eclipse, and we need to collect all the pearls from this area as well. And also part of it is that I, I feel sort of intrinsically nervous about having my armies be away from my home region for too long. Ah, oh, speaking of which, we just have, we have to retreat here. We failed to complete this quest, as expected. That's actually good for us. Because that way we got the experience from the hero for picking up the quest. But also we didn't give them the easy pacification. Um, because it pacif the way pacification works, it pacifies no matter who's controlling the region. Um, so if they're controlling the region, this army, pacif they'll be pacified. Uh, and in that case, we're kind of losing out on value. Um, Wait, we're kind of giving them value basically because so it doesn't actually matter who colonizes the region they'll, they'll still be pacified for the region's owner okay we should put one in there and then put three in something else looks like our dust is probably doing fine although we can, we can pick up extra influence i think if we're expanding quickly then the extra influence does matter um, because we still want to get a good empire plan it does cost us enough and also we need to produce nine influence for this quest to get moon leaf, so nine influence for ten turns. Um, this is going to be quite difficult. Actually, it's probably best if we get a Garth to do that at some point. We could prioritize the Garth, um, but I think I want to prioritize the settler instead. Though we might as well get these influence workers going sooner rather than later. We also think about picking up this mercenary market just to make sure we have uh, a, a new hero pretty soon. Again, we get a lot of dust through random exploration, so that's good. Speaking of which, go forth random explorer. The Skyfin is so great, it's so fast. It's really cool that there's a unit dedicated to scouting. Um, it really feels quite different. Okay, we'd have to search that, but I know there's a trap there, so we. I have to make sure we have enough armies to hold, a little, hold them off. I'm just gonna do. I almost feel like one more. Oh, Dust Eclipse is about to happen. I wanna talk to this village. Uh, in fact, the village has been raised to the ground, so never mind. Screw you, dragon. Like, I don't understand why they have to be so aggressive. Okay, we have to search this location now. At this location? Is it the temple ruins? Yes it is. Now the main thing is we need to keep track of temple ruins, because temple ruins are really good during dust eclipse. And we almost want to circle back and pick up those temple ruins of this army. And I think we will. Despite this being a little it's a little bit greedy. It is a little bit greedy. It's possible that our army gets hurt or something. Is there any other temple ruins we can see? I'm just going to go in this direction. Again, following the turbulences. Turbulences have give you bonus move. So exploiting them is, um, you know, important. And I, I think I want to go on this location just to pick up these temple ruins. So I think 
I'm going to show you the power of the Alai in terms of picking up all the necessary um, random tempo runes. Not only during the Dust Eclipse, but also, you know, during the winter we'll pick up extra pearls. So we're getting a lot of value out of our scout teams, which is a big part of the Alai game uh, gameplay and playstyle. This quest is so dumb. Although, I mean, getting influence is important for us because. We do want good bonuses, but we're settling early, so we need influence to get the Empire plan. And this can wait. It's not the end of the world if we build a Garth instead. Cool. So this leaves us in a pretty good position, I think, to uh, end the episode here. Next time we're going to explore a lot of Temple Runes, um, trade a bit on Red's uh, feet. We might have to consider at some point trying to crush Red because we're stuck on an island with Red, or we, we at least want to build armies to make sure Red doesn't crush us. I've definitely, as you've seen in my Morgar playthrough, I've had games with the uh, Red, or the... It's always Red for some reason. The Draken players have surprised me with armies, so... Uh, supposedly, Diplomatic Faction is still very dangerous. Um, and Endless Difficulty is very dangerous. I mean, I have a lot of practice games where I just flop over and die <laughs> uh, because of uh, very early aggression. like. So I definitely want to worry about that. Make sure I scout out my borders to make sure there's no armies there. This is a very important trick. Um, yeah. So with those things in mind, let's end here and join me next time to see how the Dust Eclipse works out. And also how the winter works out. That's really where we're going to see how powerful these fast Alai armies can be.